I am a 51 year old single mom who lives at home with my parents and I'm the happiest I have ever been. No! What? Come on, you don't want to go to bed? It wasn't always this way, so stick with me here. After graduating from college, I moved a lot and often far from home. I spent most of my adult life working as a broadcast journalist. I had a dream career. I worked at CNN's Headline News for seven years. I've interviewed phenomenal women like Janet Jackson and Misty Copeland. I've lived in New York, Doha, Qatar, and traveled to fabulous cities around the world. From the outside, looking in, my life probably looked pretty amazing. And sometimes it was. The reality is more complex. I was often alone, expecting to meet a great guy and start a family. When that didn't happen, I decided at age 43, it was time to freeze my eggs. Then at 46, it was time for IVF, using those eggs and sperm from a sperm bank. You think Bumble is stressful? Try picking sperm. When IVF didn't work, I decided it was time to adopt. I kept telling myself the right baby would find me, but eventually realized leaving Doha could improve my odds of being matched with the baby. And that is exactly what happened. Within eight months of leaving my dream job and moving home to my parents' studio apartment above the garage in Houston with no job lined up, I met my beautiful baby boy, Avery. The journey is not how I planned it, but I wouldn't change a thing. My name is Rochelle Carey, and I'm an Emmy Award-winning journalist. In my career, I'm moving from city to city. Each job is better than the one before. While I was working as a journalist in New York, Al Jazeera gave me this wonderful opportunity in Doha, and I just assumed that my personal life would progress at the same rate. The biological clock, it is a real thing, and it got louder and louder once I hit my 40s, so I went and froze my eggs. IVF is a physically and emotionally taxing process. I knew that doing IVF was going to cost me a lot of money, and there was a very low chance that it would actually work. But because I was realistic, I was disappointed, but not devastated. Adoption was always something I was open to. I remember my agency sending me some information about a baby that for some reason I thought, okay, this might be it. When they picked a different family, it felt personal, like it's a rejection of you. Despite it not working out, I was absolutely sure it was going to happen. I just wasn't sure when. And did that. So, Rochelle, journalist, you know, living her best life. Nothing wrong with that, baby. Do your thing. All those years coming, you pursuing your career, doing great things, living overseas, your dream career. But you've traveled, you you got a career going, you're rubbing shoulders with all these people. You I know you had some suitors coming at you, but you just decided that having a baby would hold you back. And at 43, you decided to freeze your eggs. And I think y'all can correct me if I'm wrong. Didn't Kendra G say something like that? Kendra, I know we know she's in her 40s. But you decide to eventually, ultimately, inevitably end up in the same position that most black women end up in is after all your accomplishments, being a single mother and having your parents help you with the child. You know, it's, it's crazy. 43, 46, you knew you should have known geriatric pregnancy kicks in at 35, baby. We know this. You know this. You froze your eggs at 43 and you thought you was going to pull a Janet Jackson and have a baby at 50 and things like that. That IVF, I just covered a video, which I'll probably link it, you know, with those les that lesbian couple trying. And it's very difficult, baby, especially when you after that, you know, you it's very expensive, too. But you decide, obviously, to adopt, which kudos to you, you adopting a child. But as a single mother, when we know what happens even with single mothers raising children when you and you're going to cheat your child out of that but you're going to have your father there which who knows how much longer he's going to be around and you're already 50 your child is probably what one or two now by the time you're 60 you'll be a 10 year old 12 year old these are things that happen and this is what women do when they do put their career first and just decided well maybe maybe next year i'll have maybe next year a man men came along men were clapping those cheeks and all that so let's not say that men came along and not to say who knows whether you were pregnant or not in the past you might have but a lot of women they'll say it'll i'll get to it i'll get to it i'll get to it next thing you know you're 50 years old and you can't have kids and you got to end up you're alone 
and you have to go to a sperm bank with some random person you don't even know. I'm pretty sure they're going to make it seem like how this is such a wonderful thing and a lot of women need to go the same route, that this lesbian route. But hey, it's going to happen. Go. Uh -huh. And it did. It did. You adopted your son Avery last year. Mm -hmm. I did. There's Avery. Listen, I'm going to make a special request. Can we put this picture of Avery right here behind the big screen? Because I want to read what you said. If you told me, if you told me that at 50 years old, I would be a single mom living in my parents' guest house. I would think that I had screwed up my life, but actually everything turned out perfectly, and that's why. A little nugget. Today is one year to the day that you met him? Yep. To the first time that I actually laid eyes on him, and then four days later, I physically had custody of him. So, yeah. Going back to the years of not being a mom, you traveled, you were all over the world, traveling internationally. Was there a tug at defining family as motherhood for mm. you? Yes. I, I thought I was progressive enough that I would say, you don't have to be a mom to have a family because I would truly, truly believe that. And, and some people are that way. Yeah. But I finally had to admit that for me personally, I really wanted to be a mom. Um, I wasn't any, um, but that was the, the last piece that, that I really needed. You decided to freeze your eggs at the time you were 43. Mm -hmm. How, because I know what people would often ask us about our jobs and, and they make assumptions that you don't have a kid because you're selfish or that you don't want one. Mm -hmm. Meanwhile, you're going through this rigorous and painful procedure mm -hmm. and you can't say anything really about her. You choose no. not to. Right, choose not to. No, and have people a man are, shoot the club up. Maybe if you did it the natural way, a lot of these women are depending on, you know, with age, you already know you're past a certain age and you're trying to go at an alternative route instead of having a man in your life shooting the club up. Bro, y'all, it's the delusion, the delusion, the delusion. How have we gotten to this point? But anyway, how man, you this, define this... family? Absolutely, that hurts. I've gone through that. Yeah, so I know how ask it you questions, and and like you said, it's the assumptions. Well, what's wrong with her? Or does she want a man? Like, what yeah. what is the holdup? You know, she's having all this this fun, but has she really arrived? Is she if she isn't married and, and has a child? Yeah. Now, fortunately, I didn't hear that from my family. I'm very very blessed in that regard. It wasn't from my family or my close friends. But I think it's it's definitely a pressure that women get that men do not. Mm -hmm. I am a very structured person. Yeah. I need to know when my check is coming, et cetera, et cetera. It was it was a big deal for me to decide I am going to quit not having anything lined up. Had so you had looked, nothing. Nothing. Wasn't even looking. I'm like, I'm just going home. This is how you were going to go for it. Yes. Wow. Yes. And I had made this decision right before the pandemic. Yeah. And then when the pandemic happened, I'm like, yeah, it's just time to go home. So I did. Um, you were so brave, I'm going <laughs> to tell you. <laughs> I was nervous. I was anxious. But I felt like everything I had done in my life had gotten me to this point to be able to have choices and options. And I know yeah. everybody can't do that. I understand that. Yeah. But I, I worked hard to get to that point and I needed to lean in and do it. You did. And then your family, Avery's with them right now. Yes. yes. They stepped in to help you at this point in your life that could have been again so yes. dis disorienting because you've worked yes. your whole life. Yes. I agree. I agree. Um, I, I, I was taking a risk, but to be honest, I was taking a risk with a supportive family. Yeah. And that made all the difference um, in the world. So, yes, I am 50 years old living at home, and I wouldn't trade it for the world. <laughs> oh, my. How do you explain this huge risk that you took for family? That it was absolutely worth it. That the timing is absolutely perfect. I, I am the poster child for late bloomers. All right? What's the rush? There, um, Family is what you make it when you make it, not on yes. anybody else's timeline. Well, not on baby, anybody. for one, men don't get pressured because men don't have a biological clock. Okay? That's one reason why. And as far as a woman unmarried, she beautiful. You know, people are wondering what's going on. She doesn't have a man in her life. Still at this point, nothing steady. Yeah, people are wondering. But at the end of the day, we get it. It's, it's for you. But the fact that so many people, so many black women are comfortable 
with raising a child in a single as single as single mothers and then your parents they probably just wanted grandkids and you if you sound like you're the only child that was able to give them that via adoption and you quit your job your money your papers got to be stacked up all those years you know but this isn't a precedent that we should set and we should be celebrating folks for ce celebrating single motherhood and Put your career first and save the kids for later, even if no man wants you at this age, you know, because you may not be agreeable or one that's, you know, a man is able to get along with. Just adopt a kid, which nothing wrong with adoption. Not, and I'm not saying people should adopt kids, but baby, you had the chance and you making up all these excuses. They couldn't have been a better time in your life. Baby, you're 50 years old. Like I said, this kid, he's active now. When he Wait till he gets to 10. Your parents, another 10 years from now, probably be, you know, 70s, 80s, whatever, whatever their age is. Not 70s, for sure. Probably 80s or whatever by that time. 80s, 90s. You, you're not going to be able to be running around with this child or whatever. 60-something, you, you're pretty much going to be a granny with a child, you know. But, hey, let me know what you guys think. This career thing is getting pushed, but you want kids and you feel like you got forever technologies here. Sometimes technology is going to fail you. And that's what happened to you. Technology failed you. So you had to adopt. Hey, ladies, don't let this woman make, make you think that, you know, if you want to pursue your career and family can wait. Because sometimes that day becomes a week. That day becomes a month. That day becomes a year, then a decade, so on and so forth. And before you know it, you wake up and you're 50, 60. Anyway, let me know what you think. Like, share, comment, and subscribe. Hit me up on Linktree to book a one-on-one -on -one with yours truly. Purchase all my books, merch, t-shirts. It helps to support the channel. Follow me on Instagram, Facebook, and TikTok. And with that being said, much blessings and abundance. Stick around for the next video that's going to pop up on the screen. And that's where I'm going to see you guys at. This is Wisdom. I'm out of here. Peace. It's God's true beat maker. And I don't know. I'm going to put the light in the sky for the G's that done turn memory from God.